Alright guys, another long plane review for you today. This time it's a cart on the GX4000. Uh, it's no exit. Yes, no exit. It's a one on one beating them up. It's r absolutely rubbish and probably the worst game on the system, unfortunately. Um, relatively rare. Mm. I won't, I, you wouldn't want to pay more than £20 for this if you're collecting, really. You'd be quite gutted. Um, yes, well, it's the only one on one beat em up game on the uh, GX4000. Uh, it, you can have two players. Um, yes, what does the back of the box say? I don't think this camera will focus on the writing very well. Uh, but I'll read it out very quickly. No exit. In the fantastic decors of a nightmarish country. Uh, a man is fighting for his survival, springing from a revolutionary animation method. This great game, this great combat game, will really fit the bill or fill the bill for fans of this type of game. Uh, Joker's enabling to change into monsters. What the hell? Mm. Uh, four fight parameters to be possibly adjusted by the player one or two players yes yeah, some kind of poor English there it's a French game um, and the instructions ain't much better either let's open the box up such big boxes for such little carts uh, I kind of like these boxes though they do they do look, look very nice on your shelves but uh, you know, very colorfully designed um, anyway um, here's the cart Hmm. It says made by CVS. Well, actually, the game everywhere else says it's made by Tomahawk. Here's the instructions. Yes. And uh, it's got a very poor English translation. Uh, da -da -da -da. No exit is a fight gameplay. Of course, it aims at prevailing the player against his adversary. As a result, the player can set three different attacks, a upper attack, a medium attack, or a lower attack, as well as three respective parries. He can also roll downhill, jump, take care to tiredness, or get a rest while moving supple. Yeah, that makes total sense. Um, the player is automatically facing his adversary. Lovely. Uh, yes. That's it. Controls. Yeah. Well, um, I'll talk more about the game as we get into it. Um, I'll say I think... Well, yes. Let's start this off. Okay, so we're booting this cart up in an emulator and... Uh, this is the intro. I'm going to let the music play out in full, um, it's only about a minute and ten seconds long. Not sure what that squiggly, uh, swirly, whirly thing's all about, I don't know, can't see how that fits in with the uh, game, but I uh, suppose it's a nice enough effect. so sure about the uh, no exit logo there. Uh, okay, that's the end of the uh, music there. So let's move on. Yes, there's some uh, information here. Welcome to the world of no exit. You will have to fight against an enemy that will show you what stuff he's made of. More than that, you can set up your enemy characteristics, his vivacity, his strength, his resistance, his efficiency. 
Okay, well, we'll show you that in a second. Uh, it's on the game menu. Um, yeah, loads of demo effects here. It seems like a bunch of demo programmers have got together to uh, form a programming house and development company. Yes, yeah, so there you go. There's the guys who made it. Uh, What's that? Francois. Francois Medelic. Joseph Kloitmans. Oh well. Apparently, okay, the programmer was Noel Fixer. I can't find any of the games he's done. But we're going to go to the uh, game parameters here. Now, mistakenly, you'd think this is for, like, uh, tweaking your character strength. No, it's the actually it's apparently the enemies. Um, so we can move that around and that adjusts all the settings there. But we're going to go for the default there with maximum viv vivacity and resistance. So we're going to take away all their strength basically, and we're going to start the game. Now the game's pretty short. There's only six stages and six characters to fight. I'm the guy in the green trousers and that's my energy bar to the left, his energy bar to the right nice background graphics but the sprites look okay but they're not very well animated and I'll, I'll explain what I'm doing there <laughs> it looks like I'm punching the ground um, you've got a time limit ticking down in the top left you've got to beat him before the time runs out Any leftover time gets added to your score and you've got three symbols in the top right corner there three times uh, in the game can you turn into like a monster with extra powers I think that's what he was trying to tell me on the back of the box hey just killed him and he rather nicely exploded in a shower of limbs and blood and yellow pus lovely so we're on stage two of six. We get different background graphics, which uh, admittedly they do look really nice. It's just like the sprite animation's really quite poor. Uh, it sort of jumps around quite a lot, not very, not particularly smoothly, and it just moves all too fast. Your characters are really small for the screen size. Um, it doesn't scroll, so maybe. They could have made them bigger. Um, you've only got three moves: an upper attack, mid attack, and a lower attack. There's high kick, punch, and low kick, and you can do three blocks uh, to, def to defend the enemy's upper, mid, and lower attack. You push up to turn into the monster. Down and diagonally down to do rolls. Diagonally up to jump. Which is a bit annoying because uh, you could accidentally turn into the monster when you don't want to when you're trying to jump or doing high kicks. It's also a tad at times unresponsive to your attack uh, if you for your controls and you're attacking. Hmm. And pushing down there, it, you can start recovering strength. The one clever thing about this game is. I'm about to kill him there. Is um, if you if you do an attack and you miss the opponent, you lose energy. Um, if he blocks your attack, you lose even more energy. So there's kind of a, a juggling act going on there. So you've got to make sure you land your blows each time. But you can also recover your energy by pushing down, and that's what that's where he looks like he's like punching the ground. Oh, lots of high kicks in him, in on him there. Not sure what that was. I'm not sure what he's doing there. Uh, haven't worked that out. So what I normally like to do is try and get as much attacks in as possible. When my energy starts getting low, I start playing it a bit more safe and start recovering energy. Like so, there you can see it increasing. Oh, he just got a big blow on me then. And now I haven't found like a sure way to sort of beat the game every time in all the fighters. Sometimes they're really easy to dispatch, sometimes they just like kick my ass completely. Um, luckily I managed to do it on this run through. Um, there's no lives and there's no continues. 
um, if you if you lose um, you go back to the beginning again so yeah because um, there's only six stages six fighters it's over really 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 quickly so I guess they've got to make the difficulty really tough and this doesn't make it fun they also also the characters just move about far too quickly um, for you to sort of do well you know time clever attacks and there's just, there's just absolutely no point like trying to defend yourself with parries uh, it, overall it's a pretty rubbish beat em up there's certainly no Street Fighter 2 beater I can tell you that it's quite obvious now I've been saving up my um, there you go I've just turned into a monster I've been saving up my monster attacks for the, f for the final three um, stages I'm going to and I sort of use it sort of later into the uh, stage when the enemy's energy is getting below halfway, just to finish him off. And I think this is the I think it's the second to last fight. So we're on stage five. Now this was released by Tomahawk. Um, some places credit it as Cocktail Vision. Maybe they were the, the distributor for him or something. Um, released in 1990. It was also released on uh, disc for the Amstrad. Um, apparently, oh, in you have to have 128k of memory only, though. It was also released for uh, PC DOS, Amiga, Atari ST. Strangely enough, those versions all play a lot slower, and they're actually better for it. Um, I wonder when they came to the GX4000 version, thought like, well, let's make a really, really good version for the console because you have to pay a lot more money for a cartridge. Um, you know, you'd be paying about 25 quid for this when it came out in the shops. Um, let's make it faster and quicker and stuff. Let's make this the showcase for the game. But no, it's, it's actually ruined it. And it wasn't much good in the first place. But this is the final um, guy you face in the haunted woods. There's nice use of colours, lots and lots of colours on the screen. Um, so they have, they are using the GX 4000s palette at least, and the ability to display more colours on screen. Um, but I don't think there's any hardware sprites. Potentially the bat is a hardware sprite at the top there, fluttering across. Um, but that's it, and that's the game pretty much. Um, you really don't want to be paying more than like 20 quid for this on eBay if you can. If you really must collect it for your collection, it's sometimes going to go for a lot higher price, sometimes 40 to 60 quid. Uh, but you, mm, it's really only worth maybe 30 quid tops. I'm making no contact there. Um, it, it appears fairly regularly on eBay. But there you go free attacks, free blocks. Um, Turn into a monster um, control and recover your strength control, and that is it. One fire button. At least you can have two players, though. And there we go. That is the game completed. All you get is a congratulations message, which I think is more than the uh, other versions, like the uh, Amiga and Atari ST. It, you don't even get that. It just goes straight to the high score table. So yeah, pretty uh, pretty rubbish. Um, as a score, I'm going to give this a 3 out of 10. Hmm. Yeah. Some nice effects, but I think they've overdone it with all the rasters and the flashing colours and stuff like that. It does feel like, like a bunch of demo coders got together, formed a little like... Uh, development company for games and, and threw all their bag of tricks into this one maybe maybe they just should have spent more time on the actual gameplay itself so there you go and I can't find out much about the uh, guys involved with the game Nell Fixon programmer can't find much about him at all the other guys went on to do um, games a few more years but there you go Thanks for watching guys, that was No Exit on the GX4000.